Boy Toilet List XX. Olga, welcome back to Chaos Child. Anyway, last time Serica came back to Frisia and like we learned a whole bunch of things and a little mind cat welcome to the street. And Serica is like, it's, we basically learned that she is indeed a delusion. Hello, Light Arimura, welcome to the stream. Oh my god, and that she's so fucking badass. And we also learned that the, the true final mastermind is Sakuma, which is Takumi's father, Takumi, Takuru's father. And, oh god, is a member of the Council of 300, the low-ranking member, trying to, like, uh, erase the Gigalomaniacs. We learned that basically the new Gigalomaniacs, the ones in this game, are kind of like a lesser variant of Gigalomaniac caused by the explosion of Noah 2. And uh, that's why they have like focused on one power. So it, it seems to me like Sakuma might be a true Gigalomaniac. Who boy, which is a whole nother level of power. And that would be quite terrifying. Oh boy, hello Paolo and hello March, welcome to the stream. Oh boy, oh my god, and Serica was about to tell everyone everything she knew about the council. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I love this story! Let's get back into it. Let's start with the most important issue. What is the committee after? I don't know. Huh? Huh? <laughs> If I told you I knew, I'd be lying. I'm simply cooperating with Sakuma. I've been told nothing about this organization you call the Committee. Sakuma himself was the person who was a 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 person Sakuma himself is only part of a very low-level committee organization that does research on gigalomaniacs. He knows nothing about the committee as a whole. And what is this organization? The research group that caused the third melt. The earthquake six years ago. They were in charge of the lab in the basement of A.H. Chokyo General Hospital. I shook a little when I heard her say that. That was where Manabusawa Senri had been tortured. Yep, this is the Chaos Head check. <laughs> Did you read Chaos Head? I fucking hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, you will not understand. That was where Uki had been kept and forced to care for the patients. Dad had been working for them? You just said they caused the earthquake, correct? Then it was deliberate after all. It was the result of some kind of accident. The details are top secret and not even Sakuma knows them. That's right, because uh, Nerose went rogue. Hmm. Huh. Looks like my theory was right then. 
What she said matched most of Kunisato san's theory. Shibuya Jishin ga jikken chung no trouble da to sure to. Iinkai wa sono se de kenkyu sono mono wo hoki shita no ka. If the earthquake was a result of an experiment gone awry, then is that why the committee abandoned the research? Sukunakutomo, Sakuma wa so itteiru. Rokunen mae, jiko no se de iinkai wa te o hiki, chika no kenkyu jo mo kaitai sasserare ta to. It w was it really dismantled? That's what Sakuma says, at least. The accident caused the committee to pull out, and the basement lab was dismantled too. しかも委員会はイガロマニアックスとは違う案件に力を注ぐようになったそうだ。サクマは自分たちが切り捨てられたと怒っていたが、詳しくはわからない。I think I know which project. It was the time. It was the freaking time travel project. <laughs> the Steins Gate. 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 Steins Gate.
was all fake. When he'd been the head of Alba Clinic. When he'd been the dad at Alba Dorn. That was all fake. And then he'd kill Yui and Nono, who trusted him completely. Ah! I could feel pain in my hand when I punched the wall. But it didn't let me forget any of the other things I was feeling. What is Sakuma after? I told you. He wants to eliminate all the irregularities that were accidentally created. No. I mean his real goal. Yeah, why get Taku involved at all? Why create this whole murder mystery thing? If he just wanted to kill the psychics, there are easier ways. Why make this all so complicated? Like, why follow the days? Yeah. Why leave the 11th Rorschach at the crime scenes? Why commit the murders on the same dates as the one six years ago? That's right. That's how all of this began. The mystery was so compelling that it started to work on it out with the rest of the newspaper club. And in the end, I decided that it was a game the killer was challenging me to, and I was wrong. Oh. So it wasn't... really, huh? What do you mean? It's a message for the committee. Message? A message? But then, Serika, if you were you were involved in this, why did you get Taku to come there? Like, why did you get you're the one who got Taku involved? Why? Why though? You could say that he wants them to know he'd clean. He's cleaning up the gigalomaniacs that were created by accident six years ago. Soji? Cleaning them up? Arimura raised an eyebrow. I felt so furious that it took everything I had to stop me from using my powers. Don't screw with me! So you're telling me that doing that to Yui was cleaning? But what was the whole created mystery for? Mamose-san must have seen me, because she came over and whispered for me to calm down. I just barely managed to. But Serika, that doesn't explain why you tried to get Taku involved. That explains why he wanted them dead, but... Why would you get Taku involved? These accidentally created gigalomaniacs would be Utani, Takianagi, Kakita, Watabe, and these two. And also Yui and Nono and, um, yeah. Konosato san pointed to at Arimura and I. Serika nodded silently. So da. Sakuma a matan no soshiki no ningen de. Iin kai to chokset contact to sur shudan ga nai. Da kara, iin kai ga chumok sur yona katachi de. Jiken wo okoshi te ittan da. Okay, yeah, I get that. But then, why did you personally lead him to the clues? 
And what about the whole mind controlling of uh, Ito? Like to talk about Taku. I assume Taku was eventually going to be a target because, you know, he's part of those guys. That's right. Sakuma was only part of a small organization, and he had no means of getting in touch with the committee directly. So we did things in a way they'd be sure not to miss. Well, Takumi is not one of the Gigglomaniacs created by the, uh, by the Noah 2 explosion. He's a, he's a normal Gigglomaniac. The ones created by the explosion are, like, more specified and, like, generally weaker. Like, they can't do anything they, their hearts desire. They can do one specific power, It was is what it feels like. They're, they're like specialized. さらに、11番目のロールシャッハガゾー、つまり本物の力士シールも委員会にとって見過ごせないファクターだと佐久間は考えた。And by using the 11th Rorschach, the real sumo sticker. He figured he could make it impossible for them to ignore. All of the data about it was deleted six years ago. Of course, they couldn't leave even a single one in existence behind. ニュースで公開されたら、委員会だって放置はできないだろう。必ずサクマに接触してくる。それが狙いだった。はあ。But huh. wouldn't they like not be happy with him though? I think the committee would be angry at him, and they have a million guys they could send to take care of him. Oh, that's true, Void Dweller, but that was he wasn't what what they specifically wanted to get rid of were the ones created by the explosion. But if that top secret picture started showing up in the news, then the committee would be forced to take action. They'd make contact with him. That's what he was after. If the data was deleted, then how did Sakuma get it? He hid it. He hid it somewhere they'd never imagine. And then he succeeded in getting it back. Toyoto? What do you mean? No, no, Naka, Dayo. Shika de Jikien will look at it, he can shun. Oh, Yamaza Uki got slated, Rojin will avoid it, Yuka. I was wondering about her. Like, she even had a fucking sprite in the beginning, and she didn't do anything. He hid it inside a brain, inside the brain of one of the basement test subjects. Do you remember the old woman who was always with Yamazoe Uki? Oh. oh. I remember too. Blind old woman. Muron, Anna Rosin da Kedeva, Nano Ekunimo Tatanai. Demo, Ijoni Mesrasi, Noriko, Motta, Gigaromaniacus. Yamazo Yukito no Kumia Seo Hakin Statoki, Sakuma, Kyoki Statai. Okay, what is, what is Uki's ability? Of course, the old woman was useless on her own. But then he was overjoyed to find out how she could be paired with another Gigglomaniac. What an exceedingly rare ability, Yamazoe Uki. Yamazoe no Norikwa. Tanin no more so or real boot of Stishima. Whoa! Oh, that's OP. Wow. Yamazoe's ability allows her to real boot other people's delusions. He used that, right? Oh my god. Soda. Ano Gazoni to its caretata Rojinwa. Shokujo Motomeri Yoni, Gazo Motome. Soreo Yamazoega, Bialbuto Surioni Nata. 
That is a terrifying ability. Holy shit. Correct. That old woman was obsessed with the image. She saw it like you and I seek food. And then Yamazoe started real booting it. So, the that's how the 11th Rorschach started appearing around Shibuya. Sakuma went and recovered them, then used them in his crimes. Their presence would force the committee to act. Sakuma was the first to meet with the committee. What did he do? What did he wish to gain by making contact with the committee? I forgot that she had said that, honestly. Oh no! Oh, he wants to create Noah 3. Oh shit. Of course he fucking does. Oh my god, I just realized. With the, using Uki, he could... Recreate Noah 2 in a flash. And he has Uki with him! Oh no! Oh shit. Oh shit. He wanted to restart the Gigalomaniacs project with himself in the lead. He could just, oh god, he could mind control Uki and have her do that. Oh shit, fuck. Oh no. Oh crap. That's probably why he's going there. He's gonna use Uki to recreate Noah too. Oh no. That was it. That was the only reason. But then why did Serika get Taku involved? That was the only reason he did all this. Yeah, did his senpai notice him? And did it work? Did the committee contact him? Ooh, shit. They want one final test. Oh, yep, they want one final test. Final showdown. Oh boy. It appears so. But before they were willing to restart the project, they ordered him to finish cleaning up this incident first. And how is the committee so sure that he's not going to just do the exact same thing Nerose did and just y make himself the god of this world? <laughs> With freaking Noah 3 or whatever. That's why he broke his promise with me. I was trying to end the killings by portraying Miyashiro as the killer. For the first time, there was a hint of disgust in her voice. Yep. But we still didn't answer why Serika got ta Taku involved. I, why did they skip that part? Why did she want Taku to solve this mystery? Oh, jeez. Did she want his help? And like, uh... So in the end, Sakuma betrayed you. Was he trying to make him out to be the killer? kanasato san pointed at me as she spoke. Oh, okay. I get that. 
but that there was no real Senri. She's off somewhere. I guess maybe she really did die? I... I... The original plan was for Manamwisawa Senri to play the role of the killer. The killings would end with her suicide. Huh? Huh? I was caught off guard by the sudden mention of her name. Okay, I see. Of course, as you know, it was going to be another woman named Haidariko. Miyashiro Takuru, Omaewa, Zutto Minamisa Senriga Ikite, Jibuni Fukushio to Steiru no de Wanaika to Obiete Itaga, Soreva Kiyuda. Okay, so she really is dead. Miyashiro Takuru, you always thought that Minamisa Senri was alive and plotting revenge on you, but you were scared for nothing. Honto no Minamisa Senri, Kono Yoni wa Inai. Oh, how do you how do you know that? Ah, how do you know that, Serika? How do you know that she never hated him? The real Minamisawa Senri is gone. She is dead, and she never hated you. Oh, oh my! Minamisawa Senri no koto. Yeah. You knew Minamisawa Senri directly. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Not directly, but I could read Kurusu Nono's mind. More mind reading. That's one hell of a trick. She can't turn it off, Mio. とにかく佐久間は全ての事件の後、ハイダリコを南沢千里ということにして自殺させ、事件の幕引きにするつもりだった。だが、それを計画はうまくいかなかった。So <laughs> why did he kill his own children? Or have them killed rather? Why would he do that? Your comments are unnecessary. Either way, Sakuma planned to end the killings by making Minamisawa Senri, aka Haidariko, commit suicide. But his plan didn't work. I assume that Nono found Senri before she died? I don't know. Because. I guess we'll learn more in Nono's route. Sasuga Miyashiro Takuruda, Tohomete Okuma. お前たちはこちら I suppose you deserve some praise for this. But you solved some of the mysteries of the case faster than we expected and took quick action. Okay, what do you mean by expected? Like wh why was the whole thing done in the first place for Takuru to try to solve it? その<笑> Oh, what the... Interesting. Wait, who did he plan to kill? Because of that, he wasn't able to kill the person he'd planned to kill. And the order of the murders had to change. Sarika looked at me for just a moment, and then looked away. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! He wanted to kill Uki? Oh god, no. She was probably talking about Uki. They were going to kill a little girl like that. Well, they killed Yui, I mean. I scowled at Serika as hard as I could. <laughs> So he killed Haidariko first, since he didn't have a choice. So da. New Jenny no Kyoki no Sairai Jiken wo. Togi de Sasiru Wakini wa Ikana Katakarana. 
So it's because Takadu rescued Yui that she and brought her to the oh, oh I see so basically Uki's life was traded for Yui's that's right the return of the new gen madness incidents couldn't be allowed to stop I felt disgust as I watched Sirica calmly talk about murder. This can't be the Sirica I've always known. Wait, but, can you go back to the thing about why did they want Takuru to solve the case? I don't understand this. What, what was the point of that? That was part of the plan, why? So why is he trying to flame me, frame me as Shiro Takuru as the killer? Ooh, they want to get rid of Taku. Right, and I know Riko wasn't killed in place of Uki, but Riko was going to die anyway. I, I know that, yeah. I know that, but overall, she was supposed to die anyway. So Rika was supposed to die anyway. So what I meant by that was that instead of Uki being killed, uh, a Yui was killed. But Rika was always planned to die. I don't know, but it might be the committee's orders. What? I'd never even heard of this committee until now. So why? Don't you remember? It's something you were wondering about before. What are you talking about? Coco. Whether a socket could only have one power. Oh. That's right. That did come up when we were talking in the club room. In the end, we never came up with an answer, so we had to move on. お前は私という存在をリアルブートした。これだけでも大した能力だが、その後さらに別の能力まで使えるようになっている。That is true. Well, that's cuz I think Takudu is a is 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 kind of like a bridge case. It's like he's both he's like a a gigalomaniac with uh, the standard power set, the original power set and also the new power set. It is what it feels like. You railbooted me into existence. That's an incredible, incredible power on its own. But after that, you became a able to use another ability. I wonder if if someone railbooted is automatically a gigalomaniac and a super strong one too, because that's what it seems like. Takuru's the chosen one. None of the other gigalomaniacs who were struck by the white light have been able to do this. Am I correct, Kunosato? Ah. Yeah. At least according to the data we have. Danga, Sakuma ni oreba. But according to Sakuma, the gigalomaniacs he once studied were capable of that. Yeah, so Taku looks like he might be an OG 
Uh, style, Giggle Maniac, yeah. Nani? What? Psychokinesis dano, telepas dano, Tokte no chikarake o motsu, Chow no ryok shamagai dewa naku. Yeah. They weren't simply psychics with individual powers like psychokinesis or telepathy. They were capable of real booting anything they could imagine. So Taku, yep, you actually have gear fifth. And uh, so just be aware of it. In other words, once their powers developed, the real Gigalomaniacs could do anything. I wonder who... Uh, I wonder which category Serika falls under. Because Takumi was a real booted human. And so is Serika. So would they count as the OG style or the or the newer, more limited style? Konosato san looked at me with narrowed eyes. Tsumari. Miyashiro Takuru wa honmono to you koto dana. So shite, iin kai wa nanra ka no liyu de honmono o kiken da to kangae haijo shitagatte iru. Yep. So Takudu has gear fifth. Yep. He he's an actual like a a, a OG style gigalomaniac. So Miyashiro Takudu is a real thing then. And for some reason the committee has decided he's dangerous and wants him gone. That's just a guess, but yes. It may be connected in some way to what happened six years ago. That's all I can tell you. I don't know about anything else. Whoa, 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 can you go back to the whole... Why was Taku asked to solve the mystery? Why did you do that, Serika? Why did you ask Taku to solve the mystery? Uh, is that not... Did I miss it? Like... Well, Arimura? It doesn't look like she's lying. Arimura had been watching Serik with fiery eyes the whole time. Hello, Yansheng. Welcome to the stream. Serika looked back at her, and after a moment's thought, she spoke. Ah, sono torida, Arimura. Yes, that's right, Arimura. <laughs> Arimura jumped out of her seat. What happened? Stop reading my mind! I told you I can't turn it off. There's something you've been thinking for a while now, right? If you don't say it, the others won't know. You piece of shit! There was much hatred in her voice. When Serika didn't respond, it only angered her more. Sari, no, Onoe Serika, you use your telepathy to find psychics and kill them, right? Ah, 
Yeah. So what? Lab hotel. Kakita-san was killed. Why did you kill Kakita-san? When Kakita-san. San was murdered in the love hotel. Why did you kill him and not me? That's a good question. You knew I was a psychic, right? Both of us were there. That still doesn't answer why you didn't kill both of them. It's simple. Kakira has the same power I did. A te telepath was a threat to our plans. They could find out who Sakuma and I were. That was the only reason. It was important to our plans. Damn it! It's all your fault! At some point, Harimura had started to cry. Did she really know him that well? That's right. It's my fault that Kakita is dead. You bitch! Arimura reached out into thin air and went to grab the D-sword, but then stopped. She then looked down at Serika, tears running down cheeks that were red with rage. <laughs> Damn it all! Arimura slammed herself back in her seat instead of grabbing a sword. She wrapped her arms around her body without bothering to wipe away her tears. Shinjo-san, did you get all that? After a moment's silence, Kunisato-san spoke into the phone. Yeah. There's something I want you to do. What? Yeah, they might get mind controlled and stuff, or are probably already. If there are still if there are still officers at Abu Dorm, I want them gone. The media too. Yeah, we finished our search. I think it's possible, but what are you planning on doing? I want to head there. I need to investigate Sakuma, and I want Yamazo Uki somewhere I can keep an eye on her. I wish we knew why did why did Serika want to make the whole mystery for like him to solve. Like, why did she lead him there? It was several hours later when Shinjo-san called us and told us all the police had left Alba Dorm. We were all loaded into Momose-san's car, and Shinjo-san told us which routes to follow to get there without hitting any checkpoints. Ah, where's Momose-san? Freegia. I'm going to 
she went back to Frisia. She said she's going to look at the case from another angle or something. Soko. I see. Shinjo-san was waiting for us in the living room. He stood somewhere he could observe Seraka. I suddenly felt the familiar smells of home, and felt just a little better. Oh, God. Yes, this place really is my home, isn't it? It had only been a little while since I'd left to find Kurusu, but it felt like a lot of time had passed. Did you make it here okay? Aye. Yes. I nodded back, but it felt like the whole town was going crazy. As I crouched in the back seat, I sometimes look up and peek out the window. It was bizarre how many people there were. The sun was only just starting to rise, but there were groups of people partying everywhere. Through the closed windows, I could hear irritating laughter. Everyone's excited. All departments deploy around the city to keep watch. Would I, um, maybe? I, I would, uh, I would be cautious about what I was thinking. Shinjo san must have seen the look on my face. Are they all looking for me? Yeah, so they were. No, they're not. He was about to shake his head, but... Sorry. Honestly, there's a good chance they are. It's true that the festival means there are more people outside than usual, but have you looked online? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I hadn't. I hadn't felt like it. There's a fake rumor going around that whoever catches you will get a reward. Huh? What? That can't be a reward. もちろん。警察はそんな発表はしていない。逆にデマだと発表したんだが、それが分かっていないのか、仲間と一緒に君を探している連中も多いらしい。Of course, the police have made no such announcement. They actually came out and said it was a fake, but there are a lot of groups out there looking for you anyway. Oh shit. Everyone knows it's fake. Nani? Huh? Shinjo san looked at Serika with animosity in his eyes. Nettojono Oh, wow. That's what a festival on the internet is like. They don't care whether the information is right or wrong. Isn't that right, Niyashiro Takuru? <laughs> For some reason, she seemed a little happy. She was right. That was the basic mechanism for internet festivals. Harimura? Where are Kunosato-san and the others? I want to change the subject, so I asked about the people who weren't here. Kunosato-san was one time. He was using a PC in the room and he was using a PC in the room. He was using a PC in the room. Kunosato-san is on the first floor. 
She's looking at Sakuma's computer, though she doesn't expect to find much. Hana and the others. Harimura glanced at Serika before she spoke. I sent them all to Uki's room. I thought it wouldn't be a good idea for them to be close. Arimura didn't say it outright, but I knew that she meant close to Serika. Uki wa sono. Is Uki... well... okay? Yes. Yuto-kun is because of Yuto-kun, I guess. She seems to think that she has to be the big sister. Girls are strong when they get like that, you know. You should remember that. I see. Yui and Caruso had been the same way. Whenever they had someone to protect, they were stronger than anything. Now we just have to hope that Dad, that... Sakuma isn't up to anything. それは心配しなくていい。佐久間は私と宮城のことに蹴りがつくまで有村や山添には手を出さない。ああ、ボイ、thank <laughs> Thank you, Void, for the donation on Kofi. Sakuma won't go after Arimura and Yamzo until uh, you and I are dealt with. Oh, he wants to get rid of the big fish first, I see. Hey, you. There was a challenge in Arimura's voice. Stop acting like you're a friend. It really pisses me off. She was clenching her hands into fists so tightly that they turned white. Her lips were trembling a little. All trace of an expression vanished from Serica's face. It was impossible to tell what she was feeling. And then, the intercom rang. I looked and saw it was from the examination room on the first floor. It was probably Kunisato-san. I hit the answer button and put it on speaker. Miyashiro. Miyashiro. Hi. Yes? Besides the one in the examination room, was there any other computer Sakuma used? No, I don't think so. As far as I knew, anyway. for the Kofi Olga. <laughs> Dad, though I didn't want to call him that now, had hid everything from me. Well, didn't he say where he was hiding? He said he was waiting for you guys for a big showdown at the old No It's Two building. Hey, Onoe. Outside of this place, you don't know where anywhere else Sakuma could be hiding, right? Oh. Yes. Serika answered Kunisato-san's question. 
during the hours while we waited for the police to leave our door. Kunasato Sana peppered Serika with questions. Most of the questions dealt with the nature of the committee rather than the case itself. I heard a lot of words I'd never heard before, and I don't think anybody but the two of them understood most of it. What struck me the most during that time was the rage on Konosato's face. I can't believe she doesn't get a root in the game. Seriously. We, we, we can never really find out her storyline. Her face twisted into something terrible, and she would sometimes slam her fist on the desk as if she was trying to stop herself from strangling Onoi. She must have really, really hated the committee. It seemed like it had something to do with what happened to her when she was in America, but I couldn't ask her anything. I could hear her typing on a computer over the speakerphone. It's no good. I'm not finding anything. Hey, Onoe. What? Is this everything you can tell me? Yes. Serika nodded. Then what did you mean when you said you wanted me to take care of Miyashiro? Oh. That's right. I hadn't gotten the chance to ask that. Sarah had said that at Frisia. Oh my god. Is she planning to sacrifice herself? Oh, no. Just what I meant, Kunisato Mio. I want you to keep Miyashiro Takuru alive for as long as possible once this is done. Huh? What? Oh no. Oh boy. I'm going where Sakuma told me to go. Of course, I'll be going alone. Serika looked at me and she spoke. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. Yep, smart. You don't want him to mind control you two into fighting each other. He told me to take you with me, but there's no need for me to do so. Oh no! この里にをの手引きでこの町から逃げるんだ。あいつが死んで、真実が明らかになれば、いずれお前の無実も証明されるだろう。Sarah, oh, no. oh, no. we've barely gotten to know the real you. I'm going to kill him and then die myself. So I want you to leave the city with Kunasato Mio's help. Once he's dead and the truth becomes known, your innocence will eventually be proven. What? Nande. Why? Omae wa mo abunai koto wa shinai n daro. Oh. You're not going to do dangerous things anymore, are you? No, that's not what I meant. Nande. Omae ga sonna koto suru n da yo. Why are you doing this? Watashi no sonzai suru riyu ga omae o ikasu koto dakara da. <laughs> because the reason I exist is to keep you alive. <laughs> Do you really think I'll take him in? Konosato san's voice was cold. As if she thought the whole thing was a bad joke. You won't. 
当たり前だ。私は委員会に復讐するためにここにいる。カッティメットマニアックスのおもりをするためじゃない。Of course not. Yeah, that's me, all right. I'm not here to take revenge on the committee. I'm here to take revenge on the committee, not to babysit giggle maniacs. Miyashiro Takuro, Shibuya no Sotoni, Tsreda Seba, Omae no Nozomi ga Kanao Kama Shire Naizo. If you can get Miyashiro Takuro out of Shibuya, your wish might come true, you know? Oh god, she is planning to sacrifice herself! Huh? What? Kunasato san fell silent, as if she was thinking of something. What? What's going on? What'll happen if she takes me out of Shibuya? Ika, Kunasato Nio, Sakuma, Inka, no Chusu, a Hairi Konde, Kitaira Shinga, Son Nanawa, Tada no Yume Monogatarida, Inka, Son Natsumori, and Naidaro. Ooh. How, did, how is she privy to this? Interesting. Listen carefully, Kunisato Mio. Sakuma wants to be a part of the core committee, but that's never going to happen. The committee has no such intentions. No matter what you do with Sakuma, you'll never get close to them. However, if you get Miyashiro Takuru out of the city, Things change. I for they mentioned that once in the beginning of the game. I forgot what that is now. <coughs> <coughs> That's essentially what they're calling uh, the new Giggle of Maniacs created by the thing, isn't it? Chaos Child Syndrome, huh? I frowned when I saw Serica not. Sorry, something caught in my throat here. <coughs> Sorry. Chaos Child Syndrome. That was the name for the PTSD symptoms that started appearing in children after the Shibuya earthquake. What did that have to do with anything? You are the only one who can do it. You have the knowledge needed to fight the committee. And you've noticed what makes Hekio and Alba Dorm so special. You are the only one who knows why there are so many psychics in Shibuya. What do you think? The people you want revenge on might just come to you. <sighs> I had no idea what she meant. <laughs> so it seems like Chaos Child Syndrome is basically the gate the is the gigalomaniacs appearing. New gigalomaniacs. Like a bloom of them. I could tell that Arimura was confused too. Alba Dome and Hekio Academy was special? And what was this about all the psychics being in Shibuya? It's because of that white light that created them all. No. Wait, that's not right. That light was what created the psychics. That's what I'd learned from all the information so far. But There's no reason for any of them to stay in Shibuya, is there? Wait a second. What are you talking about? Arimura shouted at the phone. 
Why are all the psychics, all the people like us, in Shibuya? There was no answer, but I knew Kunasata-san had heard. Serika stared at the phone as if waiting for an answer. Was there some connection between the psychics and Chaos Child Syndrome? Are you certain about this? Nani? What? That getting Miyashiro out of Shibuya is the key to keeping him alive. Really?。Even when he's dead? Oh, that sucks. It's like a fucking gias. What the hell? Even when Sakuma's dead, his mind control will remain. There's no place in Shibuya where Miyashiro Takaru will be safe. Which means he has to get out, right? Arimura, is she telling the truth? She should be. But what is all this about? What do you know? She went silent again. This time was long enough that I thought she'd hung up. That means that getting Arimura and Yamazoe out would make it more likely that I ran into the committee as well. Do what you want. As long as you take Miyashiro Takuru, I don't care. Huh? Oh, wait! Ah, uh, there we go. Woo! Dang, she knows what to say. Serka is so goddamn smart and cool. You two get your things together. Tell Yamazoe too. Well, if Shinjo san help us. She then abruptly hung up. What's going on? That's what I want to know. I'll be right back. Harimura sounded very irritated as she said that. She then ran downstairs to go see Kunasato-san. I thought to myself as I watched her go. Was there still something I didn't know about the case? Do you want to know? Serik was looking right at me. Ask her why- Oh, this is a good opportunity to ask her why she wanted you to solve it. As if she was trying to test me. Again. She was reading my mind again. I... I... Don't do anything dangerous. <laughs> no. Just do what you want. I turned away before the feelings in my mind turned into words. That's right. Anything else would mean betraying Nono. 
Oh god, oh Takuri, what a horrible position he's in. Well, it wasn't, the purpose of it wasn't for him to solve it. The purpose of it was to, the, the, to do the whole committee thing, to get the attention of the committee. But, like, why did Serika try to get him to solve it? That's what I want to know. I glanced to the side and saw that Serika was still staring at me. Her expression was the same as ever. But she seemed the same as when I'd knocked her hand away at Frisia. Sad. As if she'd dropped and broken some priceless treasure. November 6, 2015, Friday. <laughs> Finally, with the hope that Shibuya City reborn will experience even greater prosperity, I conclude this speech by declaring the second Shibuya Peace and Restoration Festival open! Thank you for all your cooperation. November 6, 2015, 9 a.m. The next day. The second Shibuya Peace and Restoration Festival had begun. The people gathered in front of Hikaru. Hikaru began to loudly applaud when the mayor finished his speech. Then they started to split off to visit the concerts and stalls they wanted to go see. Over 80% of the people here had come from outside Shibuya. Many were from Tokyo, but others had come all the way from outside the country to witness the celebration. There were easily more than 100,000 people attending. The first festival was held last year to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the reconstruction. And the whole world board had come out to celebrate. A similar event also been done a year after the earthquake, but in less of a festival and more of a memorial. The rebuilding work was proceeding at a feverish pitch, but at that point it was still too early to call it a silly re city reborn. But last year, even though there were still areas covered in rubble, the fifth year anniversary and the prospect of the tax revenue that would come along with it, were enough to get the government to hold a festival for the whole ward. Despite being only a one-day event, it had attracted over 80,000 people and worldwide attention. It was such a big success for the year, the city had put even more effort into it. Concerts were bigger and there were more places to eat and drink. Main areas were sent around the Karwa building, as well as the Shibuya Cultural Hall, Shibuya's 107 building, and should be a sign city. All the main roads around the station were closed to any traffic that wasn't bringing in the people or equipment to the festival. Bunkamura Dori and Dogenzaka Dori, in particular, were overflowing with performers and stalls. <laughs> H and H as, as opposed to H and M. <laughs> Should we do this spot next? The reporter with the Tokyo Next TV saw the cameraman nod, then looked at the scene in front of her. The whole thing was stupid, and she could tell she was getting tired. Center guy. One of Shibuya's busiest shopping streets. The street always had a lot of young people to begin with, and now with the festival it was covered with stalls to visit and filled with people of all ages. There's too many people here. When she'd been given the job of reporting on the Shibuya Reconstruction Festival several months ago, she'd literally jump for joy. The reason why she, she, she was so excited was that the vocalist for one of her favorite bands 
Takianagi Momone was going to performing on stage, but she died. <laughs> oh boy, but she's dead. Ever since she'd happened to hear Takianagi's voice at a concert hall, she'd been a fan or perhaps a dedicated believer. No, I haven't, Paolo. I've, I've heard of it. I think I've heard it once or twice. I have no idea what it's about. She was willing to do whatever it took to get a camera to her performance at the Restoration Festival so that the whole world could see how wonderful she was, but she's dead. Oh, but... Why did she have to die? She'd been caught up in the return of the new generation madness and was murdered. Now there was barely any point in covering the Restoration Festival anymore. But she still had to smile and obey when her boss told her to come here. And in the end... Now I'm off chasing rumors. She'd wanted to believe that a big TV station would be better than this. What she was doing was a little better than rubbernecking. Oh, there they are. Look. Rixie. Rixie! Cameraman pointed at a group of people wearing homemade t shirts. Shirts had a ripe, white pink background with a photo on the front and a big red question mark that covered the photo. They're all young, just like the other, all the others she interviewed so far. She covered her annoyance with the same smile she used to deal with her obnoxious boss. Then she pushed through the crowd and got close to the group. Oh, it's a sumo sticker shirt. Oh, shit. Why are they wearing that? Oh, God. Hello, what are you up to? Whoa, are you from TV? What station? Who cares? She thought to herself. But then she told them she was with Tokyo Next. This, look. He pulled on his t-shirt to show her. Photo in the center was two fat male faces, the sumo sticker. So if the TV's here, is it true? What they said on Tweepo? Huh? What do you mean? She played dumb and acted surprised. She certainly couldn't tell them that she'd come here because of a rumor on Tuifo, especially when there was almost certainly a lie. There's a rumor that Miyashiro's gonna kill himself right here. She knew about that. Before Donna was supposed to happen in front of the big TVs, and a few hours ago was next to the start of Hachiko in front of the station. Jeez, what the fuck? I'm, be I'm betting Sakuma has to do with that. By Miyashiro, do you mean Miyashiro Takuru-kun, the fugitive? Yeah, I got a picture. Started fiddling with the smartphone, seemingly oblivious to the fact that she hadn't asked to see it. It was the same picture of Miyashiro Takuru that she was already sick of seeing. According to her boss, it was from a student handbook. What? How did you get this? <laughs> you don't spend a lot of time on the internet, do you? Everybody's got it. We're totally gonna get that reward. A reward? Come to think of it, there was a fake rumor about that going around. Did you make those t-shirts yourself? <laughs> no way. We just bought them for 300 yen back there. Don't they look stupid? It's just a meme. And then they all started to laugh. 
that she didn't get the joke. She could feel herself getting more and more aggravated. She'd seen similar t-shirts on place cards, placards. You'd even some that were declaring me she had to talk to a god and glorifying the sumo stickers. Some of them weren't being sold as a part of a movement to get rid of the sumo stickers so people can focus on the festival, but most people were just wearing them to be part of the chaos. The chaos child! Of course, this is the first time she's seen anyone who actually believed in the reward. What are your thoughts on Miyashiro Takuru-kun? Total son of a bitch. He's a silly serial killer, right? I even killed people from his own orphanage. What a sicko. Those weird otaku guys say he's some kind of god. But well, they're just a bunch of creepy losers. I hate those assholes. She ignored most of what they were saying. There was no need to go any deeper. As long as she had the footage on her camera, that would be good enough. Everyone seemed to think that Miyashiro Takuru was the killer. At least everyone who had come to the festival to find him seemed to think so. And they were probably right. The official announcement just said that he was wanted as a person of interest. But if he wasn't the killer, they wouldn't have used his real name. And she'd also heard that they were, in fact, looking for him as a suspect, though she didn't know where that information had come from. Miyashiro Takuru, the killer behind the return of the new generation madness. She suddenly felt a rage building inside her. no way she could do what she'd originally set out to do now. The angel with the heavenly voice was dead. But if there was one reason to participate in this festival... What the hell? Is she being mind-controlled? That's right. I don't care if they're just rumors. I find all, I'll find all the information on Mishiro's whereabouts that I can. Make it easy for people like these to find him. If he wanted to kill himself in public, he was probably some kind of sick madman. If he pulled it off, even more idiots might start worshipping him. That was probably just what he wanted. She wouldn't let that happen. That wouldn't atone for her murder at all. He deserved a miserable, painful death, preferably with people throwing rocks at him like an old historical drama. Hey, what's wrong? Oh! Only then did she realize that the people in front of her had stopped talking. She said thank you and went to go find another person to interview. Oh, oh, right, sorry, one last question. She suddenly stopped and asked the group one last question she'd thought of before they disappeared into the crowd. Where are you from? Saitama, we came by bike. Then they laughed again, but she still didn't get the joke. 
This time she turned around without thanking them and walked off to the busy street. She could tell her cameraman looked confused. He didn't seem to understand the meaning of her question. If they were from Saitama, that means they weren't from Shivia. And from the look of it, they weren't victims of the earthquake either. People had nothing to do with the Shivia earthquake were looking here looking for Miyashiro. So were the victims of the earthquake she just interviewed a while ago. We're hoping that the Restoration Festival would be a success. And so were people with a grudge to bear against him like her. Come on out, Miyashiro. Her thoughts were never going to be heard on TV, and the people nearby couldn't hear them either. But they were shared by the vast majority of the people at the Restoration Festival, so everybody there fucking hates his guts. Whenever she saw someone wearing a sumo sticker on their clothes, she figured they were after Miyashiro. When she went to interview them, she found she was right. But in fact, the news that Miyashiro was going to kill himself in front of the crowd had been playing on TV every hour since the previous night. And because of that, over 98% of the people at the Restoration Festival had heard it. There was literally no place safe for him in the city. Total son of a bitch. He's a serial killer, right? He even killed people from his own orphanage? What a sicko. And now he's hearing this. The words made me sick, so I turned off the TV. I realized that the skin on the soles of my feet was starting to rub off and unclench my toes. Felt like as if I didn't keep if I didn't keep some part of my body tensed up, I'd scream and start smashing things. I'd always hated outsiders who never cared about the actual people caught up in something. But this time it was different. And who exactly is a son of a bitch? Damn it. You don't know anything. You don't understand anything. And if you don't know anything, then keep your damn mouth shut. I wasn't the one who killed Nono or Yui. They're both here. They haven't left yet. Serika had been sitting in her chair, barely moving. She seemed to be staring at a spot on the wall, just waiting for time to pass. Anna, Takuru-san. Um, Takuru-san? Hey, you're not supposed to come in here. I suddenly shut my mouth. Buki and Kazuki were both looking at Sarah. hands were shaking, either with fear or suppressed rage, or maybe both. Shinjo-san and Yuto. Where are Shinjo-san and Yuto? Shinjo-san is now calling the phone. Yuto-kun is drinking a drink and sleeping in my room. Shinjo-san is on the phone. Yuto-kun took some medicine and sleeping in my room. That's right. 
I see. I was glad he was asleep. If he sold the person who killed his sisters, we probably wouldn't be able to handle it. He was still in the elementary school, after all. Kazuki is still doing absolutely nothing. The two of them stared at Serika, unmoving. Serika didn't move either. But. It's true. At some point, Serika turned away from the wall to look at them. Yep, she did kill Nono. Yamazoe Uki. Kazuki Hana. I was the one who killed Kurusu Nono. <laughs> oh boy. Their expression suddenly changed. Serika must have read their thoughts. They took a few steps back and shivered. Then you were behind all the other murders, too. So That's right. Why? No, then. Serika's voice was calm, but Uki's was small and shaky. You know something about the place where I was, right? Where are the people I was took, taken care of? I don't know. Answer me, please. If you were the real killer, you must know. I suddenly realized why Uki wouldn't back down. That's right. Uki didn't know about Dad yet. I hadn't had the time to tell her, and... Oh, God... Uki really looked up to him. Uki was extremely shy, and it was Nono and Dad who had given her a place here. It seemed like she'd always found a meaning in life through helping others. So doctors must have been people she really looked up to. I can't tell her. Yamazoe Uki, Omaiwa. It seems you haven't heard yet. <laughs> She's got to know. Stop! I jumped out of my chair. お前なら佐久間の正体に気づける可能性があったんだがな。おそらく六年前に会っているはずだ。you should have been capable of finding out who Sakuma really was. You probably met him six years ago. Huh? Um, what are you talking about? Yes, I can't blame you, given what you are going through. Sakuma is... I said stop! As I screamed, I hit her with my power without even thinking about it. <coughs> I slammed her off a chair onto the floor. 
and then I walked over and grabbed her by the hair. I'd never been this violent with a girl before. I could hear Uki and Kazuki gasping at the change in me. Look at me. I grabbed her by the hair to make her look right me right in the eye. Enough of this shit! Don't you dare destroy any more of my family! I looked at her, mustering all the rage I could, I could in my mind. She should have been able to tell how angry I was. <laughs> Serika must have felt my anger, or maybe it hurt when I grabbed her hair, because her face twisted a little in pain. Takuru-san! Takuru-san! Uh-oh. I looked back and saw Uki staring at Serika's wide eyes. Kalski looked sad too. Please stop it. Even if Onoe-san is a, a bad person, I don't want just to see you being scary like that. <sighs> yes, you're right. I let go of Serika's hair. She ran a hand through it, violently tried to get back into place. Uh-oh. Um, Takuru-san, where is the doctor? What happened to him? I'll have gone to heaven, welcome to the stream. Also, Shinjo-san told us to get her things together. Does it have to do with something to do with that? Well, there were tears in Uki's eyes. But I couldn't be bring to myself to tell her the truth. <laughs> Serika stood up. And then she grabbed her stomach again for some reason. She was still... her wound opened up. Oh, God. There was blood on her hands. That's from where Dad said he cut her. Come to think of it, her wound like it, like it had opened when I used my powers on her back at Frisia. <laughs> Damn it! I turned to Uki, who looked like she was on the verge of breaking down in tears. I'll tell you what happened later, I promise. So go get your stuff together, Uki. But... Uki looked like she won't ask more questions. But Kazuki grabbed her hand firmly and shook her head. And then she pushed her gently on the shoulder and led her out of the room. Thank you. Oh, sorry, that was Takaru. Thank you. I said thanks in my mind for Kazuki's kindness. As soon as I heard the two of them start to quietly pack up in Uki's room, I invited Serika downstairs. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Huh? When I went inside the examination room, I didn't see Konosato-san or Arimura. That's strange. Where did they go? I thought they'd still be here. There's no equipment. There's no equipment here for a surgery. 
Serica must have already read my mind. It's better than just a first aid kit and... And Nono had said that Dad had used to be a brain surgeon. And that he'd done operations on patients during the Shibuya earthquake. She said that even now there were still patients who said he'd saved their lives. That's right. Dad was... Dad was a good doctor. The people in the neighborhood loved him. He drank too much and he could be a little lazy. But he was a man who found his life's work in helping others. He was a man I really respected. So why? At first I hadn't believed he could betray us. But as time passed, it started to seem more and more real. I knew it was pathetic. But I almost started to cry. I tried to take my mind off it by going through the shelves, which were filled with galls and drugs. But all the medicine bottles had neat labels in Nona's handwriting. When I saw them, it only made me want to cry even more. Oh, she God. That's not right. What happened? Here's the truth about Sakuma. Sakuma was a monster who gained the power of mind control and enjoyed it to the fullest. He only played at being a good doctor. Sarah lifted up her skirt and showed me her stomach. Oh, oh my... Sorry. That's... Whoa. That is a huge wound. It was covered with packing tape that had been stained dark red. Wow. Oh yeah, that is not properly bandaged at all. It was wound poorly and far too tight. Sakuma was even. What does she got? Kids no cure. Shot in a gum tape or scat the ear no meat. What at the itayo. Yaru janeka to Imi no wakara no koto itena. Sakuma once saw me using packing tape to treat an injury and laughed. Not bad, he said. I didn't know what he meant. Omaeva, Niba meno jiken o boy te iruka. Do you remember the second murder? When Taki and Aki, the street musician, was killed? Oh. Yes? Yes. 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 Her stomach was cut open and a speaker was put inside. She was mind controlled into using packing tape to stop the bleeding. When I saw him make her use the packing tape, I asked him why he was making her do that. And this is what he said. Oh God! Oh no! Oh God! Oh no! Oh no! Poor Serica! Oh God! She's just like you, right? A doll. Isn't that funny? Oh God! I could imagine his tone and his voice. I felt all the hairs on my body stand up on end. I read Sakuma's mind. I felt like I had to know why he was saying that. Serika gave a deep, a deep sigh. 
as if letting out something that had been building up inside. He wasn't thinking about anything more than what he said. The only word in his mind was funny. He's not normal. They talk about people who get pleasure from killing, but he's not even that. What the face of fucking choker? My god. All he cares about is whether or not he finds something entertaining. And it doesn't even have to be murder. Don't try to have any feelings for him. Don't try to understand him. Give up the idea that he was a loving father. Hi. I... I know that. The Batman one, boy dweller. No, you're still hoping. But to him, the conversations he had after dinner with you were no different than the brutal murders he committed. I said I know that! I couldn't tell my confused thoughts appeared to Serik. Because I truly didn't know how I felt myself. Your dad was trying to join some organization called the Committee. That's why he was going to kill me and put an end to the case. I was tired of hearing that. There's no way I can take all this in so quickly. Just ten hours ago, Dad was Dad, the lazy guy who drank too much, the doctor everybody loved. <clears throat> Without another word, Serica began to tear off the packing tape in a disorderly manner. This isn't a surgery center, so there shouldn't be any surgical tools. Instead, look in the bottom drawer on the back desk. What? That was the desk Kurusu no no used. There should be sewing tools in there. <coughs> Crusoe had indeed kept sewing tools in there to patch the buttons back onto Dad's white coat. Did she learn that by reading Crusoe's mind? <coughs> Damn it. I was angry, but I did what she said anyway. There was a bag filled with sewing tools there, like always. I gave them to Serica and she grabbed a needle and thread at random. She disinfected them and started to wordlessly sew up her own stomach. Jeez. She is one tough bitch, my god. Jesus Christ. Seeing the sewing needle stick into Serica's pale and white skin was worse than seeing the wound itself. She showed no hesitation and no signs of being in pain. <laughs> 
What kind of life has she lived? That's what I want to know. Our eyes suddenly met. <laughs> I forced myself to think of something else before she could answer my question. Where did Dad want us to go? Oh no. <laughs> Serika finished her stitches and tore off the end of the thread. He told me to come to the place where everything about this case began. At the exact time when it all began. Right. You don't know what I mean. Or everything about this case. No, or everything about this case and the one that happened six years ago began. Yes, there. See if we can't match that time, too. It'll be more traumatic that way. That's what he'd said. The place where everything began. Just like you and Kunisato suspected, the cause of all this was the Shibuya earthquake. あれは、とある装置が爆発した was caused by the explosion of a certain device. And what you call the causal factor is actually a specific type of electromagnetic wave that was spread out from there. That's what caused the psychics to awaken to powers they never wanted. So the conspiracy theory that the Shibuya earthquake was caused artificially, it was true. That's right. その装置はかつて渋谷駅前のプラネタリウムに密かに設置されていたその装置はかつて渋谷駅前のプラネタリウムに密かに設置されていたその装置はかつて渋谷駅前のプラネタリウムに密かに設置されていたその装置はかつて
There was a foreign musical play. I remember being amazed at the size of the place and the luxurious design. But what I remembered best was the faces of the people I'd gone with. Yui, Yuto, and Nono and Dad. I think it was to celebrate Nono and I making it into Akio Academy. Oh, God. We'd made it into Hekiho, which offered free tuition for earthquake orphans. And Dad had joked, "This frees up a lot of cash," and, and bought us expensive and bought us expensive front row seats. Nono had gotten mad at him and told him he was wasting money. Oh God! Oh God! What the hell? Oh God! Thinking back, it was the first time the five of us had got, ever gone anywhere as a family. Oh, God. It was a memory I had treasured. But... But why did Dad choose a place like that? Onoe closed her eyes for a moment. Probably because of you, Miyashiro Takuru. Me? Me? Yeah. yeah, just like all the rumors say, to use my control to force him to kill himself. Oh, God. The Kauri woes at the center of the Restoration Festival. The place will be full of people. He probably plans to kill you in front of the crowd and make it look like a suicide. Just like he said. Using his mind control, she continued. So then, the course I know he didn't know even to say what the shimaiba, you're in the Gekijova, Kyodaina Mujin space in another. Manichi, disorder the Kiria, how many not demo, Hitome or Sakerade. And once the events in the afternoon are over, the theater will be a huge empty space by nightfall. If he does have to get into a fight with his D-sword, he can avoid being seen. He made a big deal about it being where everything began. But there's no way he would specify a time and place for no reason. Which means the time is... 10.28 p.m. I would never forget that time. It was exactly when the Shibuya earthquake had struck. Oh boy. At 10.28 tonight, the atmosphere of the festival will undergo a change. The partying will stop and the participants will engage in a moment of silent prayer that will cover all of Shibuya. And then you show up after telling everyone you're going to commit suicide. You can imagine what will happen after that, right? That piece of shit. There was disgust in her words. But it wasn't rage. It sounded like she was suffering somehow. 
Why, Serica? If you're that angry, if you're in that much pain. Well, he would have mind controlled her. Didn't you see how much stronger he is than she is? Oh, God. Why did you do what he told you to do? I've told you many times already. You remember what happened when I was created, right? Oh no, way. Serica, save me. Please, please. Oh no way. Please give me. Oh my god. Anotoki, Omae wa mizukara no seizon wo taskete kureru watashi wo nozonda. Watashi wa sono yo ni shite umareta. Oh my god. Back then, you wished for me to save your life. And that's how I was born. それ以外の優先させる目的など私には存在しない。そのために他の全てを捨ててきた。I have no other purpose in life. And I've given up everything for it. お前に生み出されたあの瞬間から私はそうやって生きてきたんだ。いや。That's how I've lived ever since the moment you created me. That's been my life, or rather... So I can do that, and I was born. Oh my god! Living that life is the entire reason why I was born. If you want to be a man, you can be a man, you can be a man, you can be a man. Oh my god! I'll obey anyone if it means keeping you alive. Even Sakuma. I couldn't speak. If what Seruka says is true, then the real cause behind all of this is... There's no need to feel responsible, Miyashiro Takuru. I shuddered reflexively as she read my mind. You didn't know anything about the Gigalomaniacs, or the ones who were responsible for their creation. So, this isn't your fault. The feelings that were hurting me deep inside my heart came boiling up. Are you okay with that? I forced myself to speak the words. Are you really okay with that? That's right. Even if I was the one who created you. Even if I did give you a reason to live. You killed Yui and Nono. That wasn't what I wished for. The kind and gentle Serica I knew ever since I was a kid would never wish for that either. You had to keep me alive. Even if it meant losing Nono and Yui. Even if it meant killing them. That wasn't what the two of us wished for! If we really are willing to give up everything just for the sake of the goal you were given, then you're not human at all! Oh god! Oh no! Oh god! Oh no, Taku! You really are just like a doll! Oh no! Oh god!
Seraph can remain motionless, likely accepting all the thoughts and feeling I'd shot in her direction. All she did was suddenly meet my gaze with her own. It's time for me to go. Serica was the first one to break the silence. Oh god, no, god. She tossed away the old packing tape, the used gold she put on her wounds, and the remaining fresh bandages in the trash, then adjusted her clothes. After you leave Shibuya, stay quiet for a while. Kunosato Mio will tell you what to do. She headed for the door of the examination room. <coughs> she wasn't looking at me anymore. She put her hand on the doorknob and without looking back, she told me. Yorumade Kokoni Rutsumori Datanga Yamazoe Wuki no Norioka, Warito Yakaida. I was planning on staying here until nightfall. But Yamazo Uki's power is a potential threat. I don't want her trying anything. And. I don't want you changing your mind. What? But before I could say anything else, the door opened. Shinjo-san was standing there. I wasn't sure how long he'd been there for. He looked down at Seraka, seemingly trying to keep his emotions in check. I see. You're not sure what to do. You're a murderer. He blocked Seraka's path as he spoke. どんな事情があるにせよ。そして、その事情が常識で測れないものであっても、殺人は殺人だ。法によって君は裁かれなければならない。No matter what your reasons were, even if those reasons were beyond anything a normal person could imagine, a murder is a murder. You know, to be arrested and put on trial. そうだろうな。I suppose so. Serika's voice was calm. Sorry, Konkai no Jikewa. Some case take a senpai no Tomurai ga send them or. In this case, it's my way of revenging another detective I respected a lot. The two of them stood facing each other. The air was thick with tension between them. They stood like that for almost a full minute. I couldn't see Seraka's face from here. But Shinjo-san's expression seemed to waver in once in a while. He probably knew that Seraka was reading his mind. So he was likely thinking of all the things he wanted her to know. It felt like there was a silent but intense discussion going on between them. Eventually, Shinjo-san sighed a little. He moved to the side with a pained expression on his face. Ooh, they've got a secret plan going on. You're sure about this? Really, I think she's going to k try to kill Sakuma, though. Once the festival's over, no matter what kind of pressure my boss put on me, 
I'm going after you and Sakuma. No matter where you run. Yeah. You'll only need to go after one person. Only one of us is going to survive. She went to walk out of the room at a pace which belied her injury. Miyashiro Takuru. Oh boy. Miyashiro Takuru. She stopped. And without looking back, she said, Survive. No matter what happens, you have to survive. And then she disappeared. Don't think about it too much. About what? Never mind. He scratched his head and checked the time and frowned. Police are putting everything they have into security of the festival. I'll have to leave soon, too. Some can cover no cake and a crew. It all so the na. Uki could no hair any cacrete to eat. Kimi, I do a homot than I gotta. Sangashua Shinai has that. Well, I'm gone. Another cop will be here. Let's see. You can hide in Uki Kun's room. He won't know you're here, so he won't look for you. Hi. Okay. Osaku Modori, a Yorunina. Some timing with it. Hello, Rimsy. Welcome to the stream. I'll probably be back tonight. We can leave Shibuya then. Be ready to go. All right. I answered him, but my body wouldn't move. My hands were clenched tight, and I hadn't even realized it. I felt so frustrated. So angry and disgusted with myself. All these horrible things were going on around me, and someone else had already decided I was going to escape them. I'd done nothing at all. Shinjo-san seemed to be about to say something else, but he instead left the room silently. The clock said it was past 10 a.m. I was supposed to be getting ready to leave Shibuya, but I couldn't leave out the dorm right now, and most of the stuff in my room was already taken by the police. There wasn't much for me to do. And why am I even leaving Shibuya anyway? It might just be to avoid the warrant. But it was clear from the way Serik and Kunasato-san were talking that there was probably another reason. Something that had to do with her psychics. Yeah, there's like a whole other plot thread with the Chaos Child Syndrome that has apparently been going on here that we have no idea what's going on. And something that had to do with the Chaos Child Syndrome. Damn it! I quickly closed my eyes and shook my head. No, don't do it. Don't try to find out. Remember your promise to Nono. You've already learned what happens when you try to find out about things you're not supposed to know, right? Onoe has gone, right? I looked up and saw Kunasato-san and Arimura by the door. How long have you been here? 
Were they at the front desk next to the examination room the whole time? We didn't want Onoe reading our minds, so Armora and I hid. Konosato san entered the room. <laughs> Arimura followed after, but when she saw the bandages and tape in the wastebasket, she looked at me angrily. I'm not on her side. I sounded a little guilty as I said it, but all Onomura said was, I know. But the look on her face was strange. It was, as if, she, it was as, she, as if she blamed me, but wasn't able to say it out loud. So the air was still delicate between us. Nanda. Hmm? hmm? What is it? Eh? Was he lying? Huh? There's something else you want to say, isn't there? Tell me, I'm sick of secrets. You're right. Harimura looked at Kunasato-san for a moment, but evidently it was okay for her to tell me because she continued. What did Seri... What did Onoe Seraka say? What do you mean? She talked about a lot of different things, right? I couldn't make out what it was exactly, but I heard your voices. So Yes. I gave them both a brief version of what Seraka had told me. Kunosato-san crossed her arms and thought for a moment, then whispered to herself. I thought so. Huh? What's your take on this? On what? On what Onoe has to say for herself. What do you mean? I didn't even think about it. None of the things she had to say were things I wanted to hear. Even if I created her, I still can't accept this. What are you talking about? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Kunasato-san raised a hand to cut me off. What she's done is unforgivable. Whatever the reason was, that won't change. And that's not what I'm asking about. What did you think about her explanation of the case last night? What she said last night? What do I think? She told the truth, right? Well, yeah, we know that because of uh, Arimura. Arimura heard the whole thing and used her powers to check it. But Arimura looked down at her feet and softly said, do you remember what I said after what happened with Ito Senpai and Yui san? Huh? That if I'd been more careful with how I used my power, I could have figured out something was wrong with what Ito Senpai was saying. Yes. I knew Arimura regretted that deeply. What did that have to do with Seraka? Oh. I looked at her face and suddenly figured out what she meant. Was there something that Seraka had said? 
Was she lying? What did she lie about? No, she was telling the truth, but did she omit something? Did she like, was it about the re, like, are, are you talking about what I was saying about like the reason why she got him on the case? But what? It was strange. I don't know how to say it. It was all too true. Too true? What does that mean? I listened as carefully as I could. My power lets me tell when someone's lying. But people's words aren't always black and white. They hesitate, they get vague, they sometimes forget what they're trying to say. They're just not very clear, right? So even when they're talking normally, there's a part of what they're saying that's kind of gray. Which part? Human speech isn't always the product of a careful logical train of thought. It's a mix of reason and emotions that sometimes meanders or jumps topics altogether. Kunasato san had added on to Arimura's explanation. But her... Onoe Serika's words were all straightforward. It was like she was reading from a script. Well... If that's true, then wouldn't that make it a lie, though? And there were parts of what she said that I didn't like. <clears throat> Konosato-san sat down in a chair without asking permission. When she was talking to me in Frisia, I was stupid enough to let the blood run to my head. I wasn't thinking straight. So on my way here, I had an idea, and I decided to try it. That's why I couldn't let Onoe read my mind. Oh, so that was why. Last night, Kunosato-san had stayed in the examination room instead of coming out to the living room to talk with everyone else. That was the reason. What made me particularly suspicious was our discussion on the phone last night. She told me to get you out of Shibuya. She said that was the best way to keep you alive. Yes? I remember her saying that. Arimura seemed to be suspicious that her words were too true. But they seemed like the genuine truth to me. Getting you out of Shibuya makes sense. So does killing Sakuma, who's a threat to you. But... 
But doesn't it seem strange that she'd give you to me? I didn't know what she meant. What was so strange about it? Because she hates the committee. I guess she knows that she hates the committee. Why do you think she trusted me to take care of you? And also the Chaos Child Syndrome thing. Because you know something, right? Something that we don't. That's why she... Even without that, if the reason she exists is to keep you alive, she would need to stay with you until the last moment of your life. Am I wrong? But if she was lying about that, wouldn't Arimura detect it? But that changed because of death. Because of Sakuma. Arimura suddenly cut me off. That's what she said, and she wasn't lying. But don't you find it strange that she wasn't lying? Huh? Huh? I stared at her, uncertain of what she meant. So, I don't That's right. Her words might be lies disguised as truth. I know that. I wonder how really good Arimura's power is. I think I know what that means. But. How would she have used that? Kunasato-san nodded. Lies disguised as truth. I know what that means. She'll do whatever it takes to keep you alive. No matter what. But how is that a lie? Well, he's a powerful gigalomaniac, isn't he? Sakuma is just a scientist for a small scale organization. What's the point of dying to kill him? It's useless. The committee's power is vast. Killing Sakuma doesn't guarantee your safety at all. But how can she protect you if she's dead? That's why she's giving me to you. Don't be stupid. It's true that I plan on using you as a decoy to lure out the committee. But once I don't need you anymore, we're done. I'm not gonna keep protecting you. <laughs> Still as frigid as, as ever. Onoe Serika can read my thoughts. Do you think she doesn't know that? In other words, if the committee really is after you, she would never allow herself to leave your side. So if the committee probably isn't after him. So if she lied about that part, in other words, if she said words, that sound that implied that the committee was after Taku without actually saying the committee was after Taku. Maybe she just did that to trick uh to trick Mio into getting him out of Shibuya. <laughs> 
どこまでも先輩を守ろうとするはず違いますか She would do whatever it takes to protect you herself. Am I wrong? So, so that's. So, s t e m o h i t s Get the taking your cushion, k o t a r And there's the whole thing with why did she get him involved in the case? That's what I really want to know. She, they never answered that. And there's one more thing that doesn't make sense. Why didn't she just tell you the truth from the start? From the start? When you woke up from your coma after the earthquake. I mean, I guess he would think it's weird and. Oh. I mean, that, I, I guess it would make sense. Like, wouldn't like, she think that he would think that's really weird? And he wouldn't want to be with her? Like, he wouldn't want her around and stuff? I don't know, it makes sense to me. If her true goal was keeping you alive. There was never a need for her to hide the truth. In fact, telling you about your power and about the committee would have given you a better chance of staying alive. So, why did she get him involved in the murders? Is she actually really. Oh no. Is she actually really bad and trying to kill him? But I don't understand anymore. Does she actually really not like him and just wants him to die or something and wants him to suffer? Like, what, what is going on? Jeez. Oh god, I really hope that's not the truth. What the fuck is going on? If you'd known about them, you never would have gotten involved with the murders. You wouldn't have put yourself in danger. See, something's not right, is it? She was right. I didn't realize until they told me. I never would have done the things I did if I didn't. If I'd known what Sarah had told me last night. Just like Konosato san said, I would have stayed away from the murders. In fact, I might have done something to keep us away from it. If I had Nono and Yui, might still. But. Nande. Why? Why did she hide the truth? It's almost like. It's almost like she was trying to put you in danger, isn't it? Why would she do that, though? Harimura said the same thing I was thinking. Yeah, how would she, like, how do you spin that? Like, I. But she couldn't have been lying, right? You were right next to her last night. Really? Oh no. No, there is a way. There's a blind spot in my powers. A blind spot? I remember what Arimura had just said. Everything Sarah had said was the truth. But it was too true. It was as if she was reading from a script. Oh! I understand now. There is one way. One way to get through to Ar Aramura's powers. Was it the same thing that happened to Ito? Aramura nodded slowly. 
私が伊藤先輩の異常を見過ごしてしまったそれと同じ方法なら Yes If it was the same way Miss Wolves wrong with Ito Senpai Wait is she under my control? She's been under my control this whole time? Oh no Mind control That meant There might be a little bit of hope Oh my god Whoa In other words Onoe's mind has been controlled by dad By Sakuma Oh my god And she only did it because she was being controlled Just like Ito But our remorse didn't look any better when I asked her. But I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be that lucky, but. I thought that we might be Oh God! Oh no! What if, what if Sakuma was making Sarika say that so that Taku would come and he would have her kill him? Oh my God! Sakuma, so, so I, I see. But then that would be the way to get around her powers if she was being mind controlled the whole time. My shoulders slumped, and that would follow along with this, the that that part that we saw with um. Sarika was running away, because she remember when she called uh, Sakuma a blackmailer and stuff like that, and she had been hurt by him. She must have gone back to confront him, and then she got. Mind controlled again, oh my god. Senpai. Don't get any weird ideas. Even that might be a trap. Yes. I know. I spoke clearly. I thought that I was telling the truth. But Arimura looked down as if she was in pain. Was I lying just now? Konosato-san must have figured out what I was thinking, because her expression came more stern. I was thinking about it. The fight was real and she lost, and that's how she got mind control, is what I think. I think there's a potential for mind control too. It still doesn't make sense. If Sakum is controlling her, why fake a fight between them? She was right. There was no reason for Dad to do that. If he'd sent Serika as an assassin, I would have been dead already. The two of us had even been alone together, and Serika had done nothing. Damn it. I knew it. There was no point in hoping Sarah was really just a normal girl who didn't know anything. Oh, she definitely knows things. She absolutely knows things. I should have been able to tell from watching her last night. The way she talked, the way she acted, the way she behaved toward everyone else. It was all different than the Sarah I knew before. If mind control was involved, she would have acted like the Sarah I knew. Because... And I hated myself for saying it. If she had been the old Serica, I couldn't have brought myself to hate her. I would have thought about her for a long time, then maybe forgiven her. And then, like an idiot, I would have done exactly what Dad wanted, and only regretted it the instant I was killed. Miyashiro. Miyashiro. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? 
Colonel Sato-san's expression was as fierce as ever. Hi. Yes? Then carefully. This could be extremely important. I asked you this yesterday, but during the earthquake, what did you wish for? If that wish was what real booted her, what did you want from her? Was her job really to keep you alive? What else would it be? What did he what did he wish for? I remember what it had been like back then. I remember the hellish sights around me, the horrible headache. I remember begging Sarah to help me. For help? Serika said it was her goal to keep me alive. To save my life, literally. <coughs> There's a brief but strong pain in my head. I pressed my hand to my forehead. Whenever I remember that moment, the pain came back. Are you okay? Ari Moore had been through the same pain, so she was worried. I raised my hand and told her I was okay. Um, I think I just told her to save me. Save him? Save him? From what? So saving... So wouldn't that still follow the same way? I couldn't remember if I'd barely been able to get the words out, or if I'd shouted them at the top of my lungs, or even if I'd said them all out at all. But I could remember asking Serika for help. Still. Was that really all I wished for? Back then, I... Come on, Taku, please remember. Jeez, uh, ooh, that was loud. Damn it! It was a new pain. This time I could feel a throbbing in my temples. I pressed my hand harder to my head and my nails dug into my skin. My whole body staggered and it fell to the floor. Senpai! Senpai! There was a warm sensation on my shoulder. Arimura was trying to help me up. I'm sorry. I'm fine. You're lying. Arimura led me over to the bed in the corner of the examination room. I wanted to lie down right away, but... No, I can't. Shinjo-san said another officer is coming. He told me to hide Nuki's room. Then let's just go upstairs. I nodded and thanked her as she held me by the shoulder. I forced my body to softly push her off, push off her and stand up on its own. Kunosato-san, I'm sorry. <sighs> She sighed in resignation and shook her head. It's fine, she said. Without Onoe here, I can't get confirmation the other way. From what you said, 
Illinois is going to be at Theater Cube at 10.28 p.m. tonight, but... Unfortunately, I can't see myself being able to fight two psychics. I can't even fire a handgun in a l I haven't even fired a handgun in a long time. <laughs> what? Harimura turned to Kunasata-san, surprised that she'd fired a gun. Kunasata-san seemed unusually hesitant, but told us... I had to say it, but we'll have to give this up. There's something not right about what Ono is saying. But we don't have anywhere near the time or manpower need to find out what it is. For now, we'll follow the original plan. Wait for Shinjo-san to get back and then lead Shibuya. If this is all some kind of plot, we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. What the fuck is going on? Yuto. I went to Uki's room to hide before the police officer got here and found Yuto curled up asleep on a bed. He must have been crying for a long time because the area around his eyes were red. I could see a tear marks on his cheeks. <sighs> Uki was sitting on the bed, softly holding his hand. She'd probably been like that for a long time. It seemed like a very natural thing for her to do. You're being a good big sister, aren't you? No, I'm still not. Her voice was soft and kind, so as not to wake Yuto. But there was a loneliness mixed in with her words. I could see that she was looking at a photo on the desk. There's a picture of Yui and Uki. I couldn't tell when it was taken. Yui was hugging Uki from behind. And pressing her cheek up against Yuki's blush Uki's blushing face. I thought about the person who'd taken this picture. If it wasn't one they'd taken themselves, someone else had had to have taken it. It couldn't have been Yuto. Yuto was there even standing between the two of them. And Dad wasn't into taking photographs. It had to be Nono, right? Which meant it was probably Nono. I could tell what Uki was thinking when she looked at it. She was thinking about when Nono had taken the picture. We're leaving tonight. Are you ready? Yes, I guess. But I still don't understand. Neither did I. It wasn't that I didn't know what to take. I didn't know what was happening to me. I hadn't even been told where we were going, except for we were leaving Shibuya. We're just leaving for a while. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Hi. Okay. Uki smiled just a little at Arimura's attempt to make her feel better. Are you really okay with this? Sure am. I've been wanting to go on a trip. She was joking around, probably because Uki was here. 
It felt like old times, and I smiled a little. Of course, she wasn't okay. She was leaving the town where she lived and with no notice at all. And she was leaving because someone wanted to kill her. <laughs> what do you call this anyway? Jumping on the bandwagon? Hmm. Banding in a wagon? No, and that one didn't even seem to make any sense. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Kazuki! <laughs> Is Kazuki ever gonna do something besides exist? <laughs> I suddenly realized that Kazuki was in the corner of the room chewing dried squid. I hadn't seen that in a while either. It was kind of a, of a relief. Hana, you'll wake up you too. Hmm? <sighs> I wonder if I have any, enough clothes. I guess I'll have to go buy some. Arimura tugged at her outfit as she spoke. Um, Arimura-san, if you'd like. Oh? Hmm? If you'd like, you can use Nono-san's. They're in a room. Arimura froze. She clearly didn't know what to say. Yeah, no, but that's... It's all right. Right, Takuru-san? Right, good night, Les. Thank you for staying as long as you did. Get some rest. I was a little surprised. For a moment, she looked like Nono or Yui. She probably decided that she'd protect Yuto, and so she was trying to be a big sister like they were. I nodded to both of them. Yes. Nono hated to waste anything, no matter how small. Would you take them? But, Senpai, you... I'm fine. Arimura seemed a little surprised, but her face finally took on a serious expression. I understand. I'll take them. Okay. Yes. Harimura ran over to Nono's room to get the clothes before the policeman came. I saw I should probably check if there are any clothes left in my room, then stood up. Shibuya. Hanaeru. I'm leaving Shibuya. Tried to leave the room quietly so as not to wake up Yuto, and then I stopped. What was it? I asked you this yesterday, but during the earthquake, what did you wish for? If that wish was what real booted her, what did you want from her? Come on, tell me! Tell me! <laughs> I remember what Kunosato san had just said. I looked around as if trying to find the answer to a problem I couldn't solve. And then I saw Uki holding Yuto's hands as he softly moaned in pain. Here. No. I don't have to know, do I? I don't have to think about things I don't know. This is the right thing to do. You, you, oh, he, what is it? If I endured that headache long enough, I could probably find the answer. But I gave up and left Uki's room to go get ready instead. 
Uh, I really want to know. Friday, November 6th. Is it nighttime yet? A little after 4 p.m. Seven hours have passed since the beginning of the festivities, and even though the sun began to set, she had no sign of slowing down. Lines started forming in front of every food stand and restaurant along lunchtime, and they were all still packed. <laughs> there were all over 30 concerts from huge thousand seat venues, major artists, tiny little bars with only a dozen or so seats. Each one was standing room only. Guerrilla performance artists would approach the crowds, hoping to attract customers, and in turn attract crowds of their own. Over 80,000 people were still attendance at the festival, which had gone far beyond the organizers' wild expectations. There were the usual issues associated with big events, like minor fights and lost children, but there had been no major problems so far. I have to know. The police and Shibuya station helped keep things safe, but the biggest factor was the volunteer staff. Organizers were recruiting volunteers at the last minute to handle the crowds, keeping everyone safe and in a mood to spend money. Many of the volunteers were victims of the original disaster, and the experience they gained in the earthquake had taught them how to get along and work with other people. When a major band had made a surprise appearance at the stage in front of the 107 building, it was a mild panic. But the volunteers from Human Wall to keep people in the crowd safe. Today's the day to celebrate the restoration. We can't have anyone trampled to death. That's what the leader of the volunteers has said to an interviewer who had happened to be at the scene. He was an honest and sincere man. He was speaking from the heart and didn't mean anything more than what he said. But his words brought to mind a certain name and a certain face, both among the people who saw him on TV and among those who heard him directly. The word that had made them think of that name was, of course, death. What the fuck? What the fuck? What's with those guys? Those are the guys the news have been talking about all day. Everyone there was hoping for the festival to succeed. At the same time, they hadn't caused a big problem yet, but there was one big concern among everyone's minds. When a girl and her boyfriend left Shibuya Station, heading for the stage at the Culture Hall, saw a group of people wearing creepy masks. Those guys who were, who were just... What the fuck are those... They just appeared once in like chapter fucking four and then never again. There were over a dozen of them. Another group came from another direction. Is that freaking Sakuma's army or something? What the fuck? Suddenly there were several dozen of them. Of identical masks, identical t-shirts. Faces of two fat men overlapping. It was... The sumo stickers. <sighs> yeah, they're like all zombified or something. They said nothing. Anyone who got close with the vaccinator because they wanted to get a picture would flinch away as, as they heard the eerie sound created as the sumos breathed underneath their mast, masks. The man at the head of the group looked around and then approached a nearby streetlight. <sighs> then he took something out of his pocket and stuck on the light. Oh, it's a sumo sticker, I bet. Yep. The owner of a nearby crepe stall saw this and frowned. I was too scared by their. Has someone called security? He didn't say anything. He quickly went back to dealing with his customer. It was something he'd seen again and again since the festival started. The only ones who saw it were people like him stood in one place the whole day as they ran their businesses. The majority of all attendees caught up in the flowing crowd saw nothing. But if you were to take all the stickers placed on the ground, all the decorations and streetlights on the walls, you'd have enough to cover the huge TVs at Shibuya Scramble Crossing. Oh god, what is Taco gonna do? Oh no, and Sarah cause... 
But is Serika even affected by them? Like, it doesn't seem like she is. Seekers were slowly taking over, spreading even to places where no one could see them. They were like a physical manifestation of all negative emotions that lurked within the attendees. It was about three hours later, when around 7 p.m., when they finally exploded. They found that the place once set up for the silent prayer that would end the festival. Right in front of the memorial. I can't see. Move! Wait, seriously? Is that him? Die! Die, you murderer! That's Miyashiro. Miyashiro Takuru has appeared in front of the memorial. Serika, what are you doing? A little after 9 p.m., Serika arrived at the Hikari well. Most of the attendees had gone elsewhere, and it wasn't as busy as it had been earlier in the day. She looked around and listened to the thoughts of the people passing by. Man, foot that Miyashiro guy. Really gonna kill himself somewhere? He didn't just run away? I hope he does it soon. I can't go home until I see whether he kills himself or not. Not like I care which, really. Ooh, wow! Okay, Sarah. Hell yeah, they're wrong siders. Fucking wrong siders. Damn, hearing Serika say fuck is a mood and a half. Serika, what is your deal? What is your deal? Serika whispered as she listened to the worthless thoughts around her. The couple a few feet away glanced over at her but quickly turned away. <laughs> Serika closed her eyes so she could concentrate only on the thoughts of, around her. What is her? What is she trying to do? As of 9 p.m., all the concerts and street performances, as well as a few of the stalls, were closing up. The festival was nearing its end. After this, the attendees would rather gather at a specific time for a moment of silent prayer. The festival would be over. The crowd seemed to be heading towards the station and the memorial. There were still too many people here for them all to fit in the memorial plaza. So the big VIPs, as well as the families of the victims of the earthquake, gather at the memorial itself while everyone else would watch the proceedings on TVs in front of the station. Oh boy. Okay, so she doesn't want that to happen, right? Oh god, I, I'm so sorry. I have to go to, I have to take a bathroom break. I will be right back. I am, th I think I'm finishing this tonight. I am wide awake. No, I think we are not stopping until I reach the common root end. <laughs> I'll be right back.
All right, back. Sakuma probably plans to reveal Miyashiro's body at the memorial after he kills him, doesn't he? But the TV's in front of the station memorial park near Hikaruo. But the park was just a little closer. Anything that happened in the park would be replayed for people watching on TV. In other words, more people would see it. That man from before is probably part of his plan. Several hours ago, she heard that Miyashiro had appeared in front of the memorial. But she quickly learned the report was mistaken. What is... what does she want to do? It was a fake. A man pretending to be Miyashiro, who worshipped him as a messiah. But the man himself had looked nothing like Miyashiro. He is nowhere near as hot as Miyashiro. Yet for some reason, the media had decided to report it as Miyashiro talking to himself appearing at the memorial. As a result, security around the park and plaza had been strengthened. As a result of that, another rumor was spreading. This time that Miyashiro would be appearing there. It was almost certainly part of Sakuma's plot. Sarika opened her eyes and rubbed her stomach as if to check on her injury. It had been almost 24 hours since Sakuma had sliced open her stomach. She still wasn't in top shape. She had lost a lot of blood. And the dull pain in her head that resulted from resisting Sakuma's powers had come back in the second she let her guard down. <laughs> this had been the result of her attacking him in top form last night. She survived working with the committee this long, so she couldn't shake her logical and very realistic doubts. Could she really kill Sakuma? Okay, so she really definitely does want to kill him. She's not, like, secretly evil or something. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Miyashiro Takuru. Miyashiro Takuru. Miyashiro Takuru. Miyashiro Takuru. Her thought suddenly came into her mind and she frowned suspiciously. That was strange. She hadn't been trying to read anyone's mind. It was coming from somewhere in her field of sight. Come on out, entertain me! He like hypnotized a whole army. Die, 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 die in a really cool way. <laughs> Negative thoughts flowed into her mind one after the other. They were strong and vast in number. Oh my god, this is what. Oh no, this is what happened to Takumi! And she is a delusionary being just like Takumi. It was just someone to combine all the final thoughts of all the people she'd killed. <laughs> There's a freaking Rixie. Ah, it's those people. She forced herself to look in the direction of the thoughts and saw the group wearing the sumo sticker and masks. She tried to squeeze them out of her mind. But they slipped past her and echoed in her head once more. Miyashiro <laughs> Takuru. Miyashiro Takuru. Miyashiro Takuru. Miyashiro Takuru. Dede koi, tanoshimase te kure. Come on out, entertain me. Shine, shine, shine. Kakko yoku shine. Die, die, die in a really cool way. Only strong thoughts and desires could create this effect. It was as if all these feelings had formed into one single strong emotion. A desire for Miyashiro Takuru to appear. Are they trying to, like, real boot Miyashiro Takuru? <laughs> For the first time in a very, very long time, Sarika was terrified. She could feel herself break out into a cold sweat. <laughs> Her logical and realistic doubts vanished. It didn't matter if she was capable of killing him or not. She had to kill him. Miyashiro had to survive. Okay, this, this follows through. She definitely wants him to live. And for that, Sakuma had to die, and soon. Soro soro ka. It's about time, huh? She looked at her phone and saw that it was past 9.30. Everyone inside the theater had probably been let out by now. Oh boy, oh boy! She's going in. Shibuya, the Ikari Building, the 11th floor. 
the entrance to Theater Cube. This room was also the entrance to the office floor, and it was always crowded with people. But now there was no one here save a lone employee and a single security guard. The festival event in the theater had finished up at 9 p.m., and there were no other plans to use it. It doesn't seem right. The whole floor was lit up, giving its classy design an elegant atmosphere. It didn't at all match what was about to happen inside the theater. By the time this was over, one of them would be dead on the floor. I am so relieved that she doesn't actually hate Takudu and want him to die or something. Oh, God. Serika stood on the edge in front of the convenience store on the floor and waited for the promised time to come. There was still no sign of Sakuma. A little after 10 p.m., she realized something was wrong. Oh. The employee and security guard at the front desk suddenly started to leave. Oh boy. They're clearing the way. They dropped what they were carrying and began to stagger out, as if they weren't thinking about anything. Her eyes went wide and she immediately tried to read their minds. <laughs> <laughs> she felt a sharp pain in her head when she did. They really weren't thinking about anything. There wasn't even the meaningless subconscious noise that all humans produced. Nobody was ever like this. Nobody normal, that is. Mind control. Damn, Sakuma's too OP. Two of them walked into the escalator as if they were in a daze and then disappeared. All that was left was empty silence. He's well prepared. Uh oh. <laughs> Another violent pain struck her. That didn't make sense. They had already vanished. There was no reason why she should be hearing her thoughts. Where was this heavy load coming from? <laughs> what? She felt something very strange in her mind and body. And then she saw her right hand slowly begin to move without her controlling it. Uh oh. Oh no, she's being controlled! Oh no! Are you all ready? Oh god, she is gonna be mind controlled to fight him! Oh god! Oh no! Yeah, everybody's ready to go. Shinjo-san was out of breath. He'd run back to our dorm to take place to the other officer, who I hadn't seen because I was in Uki's room. I could tell he'd been literally running around all day. The longest stream was back in the Uminaku days where he did a six hour stream. <laughs> ah, those were the days. I've done four hours several times though. Okay, I'll, I'm the only one who'll be here for the next several hours. I gave some false information to the media outside. No one here now, we can take the car and go. Miyashiro and Arimura are one thing. When the next officer comes, how do you intend to explain Yamazoe and Tajibana Yuto's absence? That was a good question. There was no way to hide that, and it would be his fault if they were missing. Felix, 
I've learned how to change the subject by talking to you and Mamose so don't worry. I'm not worried about your well-being, Baka. I have a lot of work planned for you after this. You can get demoted, but I can't have you be being fired. See, that's how I learned. Shinjo's on side. <laughs> I love it. She's making the classic Sundari pout there. I'm glad. I like these two together. I think they're they're cute together. Then Uki came in with Yuto at her side and a worried look on her face. Anna. Um. She slowly raised her hand. The other hand was clutching Yuto's tightly. Yuto's eyes were still red and he wasn't looking good. Uki seemed to be trying to hold him up. It's like five years, right? Light armor is like a five year age gap or something between them. That's not bad at all. Where are we going? Akiba, for now. Oh, we're going to see Okabe! <laughs> Okabe Rintaro! Oh my god. Are we going to see Kurisu too? <laughs> Is that where we're going? Oh my god. What? Akiba the. Akiba? Do you mean Akihabara? Huh. Yeah. I was sure that we go somewhere less densely populated. I thought we go somewhere further away. Oh my god, it is! Sada san has someone in Akiba helping her. Shinjo-san looked back at her. Someone else is helping Konosato-san? Oh, it's Daru! <laughs> oh, it's Daru! Daru, the guy who gave this channel its name. <laughs> oh! A hacker who is better at finding information with a computer than I am. He's a weirdo, but he knows a bit about the situation. I'll put us up for a while. Because Daru is the hacker. And he lives um, in the same house. He lives very close. He's uh, uh, Okabe's neighbor, right? So they, uh, they work in the same room all the time. For some reason, Konosato san furred a brow and frowned. Is he giving you the timely machine? No, no, no. <laughs> He's giving us a fairly decent machine, too. No, who knows what he'll want in exchange. Hmm? Huh? Ah. Shinjo-san seemed confused. Evidently he hadn't met this helper of hers. Anyway, what's important isn't how far away from here we go. What's important is getting out of Shibuya. We'll stay there for a while and see how things go. Arimura-san, what did you 
That's the plan. Where's our Remora son? Oh, Mono no here there. Oh, she's in Nono's room. On the phone. So I see. Arimura had said she was calling a family before she left. But when she'd taken her phone into Nona's room, she hadn't looked like a girl who was saying goodbye to her family. It always felt like Arimura didn't want to talk about her family. I hadn't brought the subject up. I guess we'll find out more about it in her route. So I had a vague sense that they weren't on good terms, but I didn't know anything else. Yes. Okay, when she's done, we'll go. Okay, Cars by the front entrance. We don't have to worry about the media for a while, but be careful when you get in. Neighbors might be watching. I, I'm taking you two too. Huh? Buki suddenly spoke up. She must have been nervous because she clutched his hand even tighter. She was acting a little strange, but also cute how much she cared. I couldn't help but smile. Yeah, that is really cool that she. She got over her Stockholm Syndrome with the freaking place, the people there, and she's really come into her own. I looked at Shinjo-san and saw that his expression was much the same as mine. Of course. It's been the plan from the start. Is that okay, Yuto-kun? Mm. Yeah. Yuto nodded. And then he looked at me. Takuru-ni-chan. Big bro. Hmm? Hmm? O-Oto-san wa doko ni iru no? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Where's dad? Is he okay? He doesn't know. I didn't know what to say. Yuta didn't know anything about what was going on. Nor did Uki, who was also looking at me and expecting an answer. It hurt to see how worried they looked. All I could do was tell myself that I couldn't make it any better. Ato de Hanasio. I'll tell you later. When's later? Once we reach Akihabara and get settled in. I could tell Yuto was struggling with his feelings. Now it was his turn to grasp Uki's hand tightly. Okay, as long as you promise. Ah, hora, nimos to tekina. Yes, go get your things. Mm. Okay. The two of them must have felt the exact same way as they went to their rooms, still holding each other's hands. Ah. Shinjo san looked at me with a pained expression. Daishou desu. It's fine. Hmm. Of course, that was a lie. But Shinjo-san was nice enough not to say anything. Shinjo-san, I want to Shinjo-san, I want to check one last thing. Oh, he's gonna. Oh, I know what he's gonna do. He's gonna use Sarah to lure Takuru there. Oh shit.
Kurosato-san stared at the hallway where Uki and Yuto had just left as she spoke. I could tell from the way she was acting that it had something to do with death. About two and a half hours ago, someone appeared at the memorial park claiming to be Miyashiro, right? Oh. Yeah. I remember the news I'd just seen on my tablet. The TV news and Tweepo have been talking all about how it appeared at the memorial park. But of course, that was a lie. I was right here. I assume we'll be left off with a warning and release tomorrow. That's the plan. I feel sorry for the guy, but can you do whatever it takes to keep him locked up a few more days? Shinjo-san seemed to know what she was getting at. He looked out into the hallway, too. You think Sakuma sent him? She nodded. The timing is such that any number of fakes could appear, but... But it worries me that a man trying to be Miyashiro Takaru didn't make the slightest effort to look like him. Even at a distance, anyone should have been able to tell was a different guy. It's true that it's true that he wasn't a chaos child syndrome patient. Shinjo-san said. That was confusing. When I'd seen the man on my tablet, his height and age had been mostly the same as mine. I thought it would have been hard to tell us apart from a distance. And what did chaos child syndrome have to do with it, when that was just a type of PTSD? What's going on? I'd like to know more about him if I can. Konosato-san tapped at a temples. Got it. I'll work something out. It was also strange to see how easily Shinjo-san agreed to keep an innocent man locked up. What are you guys talking about? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> it's time to go. Tell our Morrison. He pointed to the clock before I could ask any questions. It was 10 p.m. Hi. Okay, I've got all our things ready. Huh? Right now it's 10 p.m. I opened the door to Nono's room to tell her more it was time to go. There was no one there. The lights were off too. Was she already done talking on the phone? That means she probably was having Kazuki get the last of the things together. So she likely be in the dining room, maybe Uki's room. Come to think of it. Yeah, seriously, Kazuki didn't even need to be involved in any of this shit. <laughs> I guess we got Kazuki involved in all this, too. Kazuki wasn't involved in this case directly at all. But she was helping a lot, just because she was a member of the newspaper club. 
Are we actually going to talk about Kazuki? Still, I couldn't ask her to come with us. While well, we, well, we've been waiting for Shinjo-san, she's tried to tell us that she'd come too. Of course, using a se only a series of mumbles and gestures like always. But I'd refused, though I was grateful to her from the bottom of my heart. She'd seemed unsatisfied. But I finally got into her to agree to it by promising to keep in touch and to come straight to her if we needed help. I couldn't cause any more trouble for someone who wasn't a part of this case. Part of the case, huh? I was suddenly conscious of smells in Nona's room. Without bothering to turn on the lights, I shut the door behind me and walked over to her desk. I ran my hand along it. And only then did I realize it was the first time I'd been in here since her death. That's right. Nona wasn't supposed to be a part of the case. What is that? Why? He's one of those people who deserves to be happy in life. I knew that. He was right. She wasn't supposed to die. There was no reason she deserved to die. She was only killed because she'd learned Serika's secret. Oh no way. What was her real goal? Remember what Kunasato san had asked me this afternoon. What was she really after? Are you gonna now find out? <laughs> Damn it! I almost screamed as I heard a loud noise come from inside my bag. The sound of my phone vibrating. I quickly flipped over the bag and spilled its contents onto the floor. <laughs> Picked up the phone and read the words unlisted caller and duck. Oh boy. That was kind of creepy. I did not have a good feeling about this. Afraid I touched the answer button. Da. Who's there? There is one thing I forgot to tell you. Omae. You! I moved the phone away from my ear in surprise. It was Serika. There was no mistaking it. I checked the time on the phone without even thinking about it. 10.03 p.m. So, okay, so this is what she's been supposed to do. Listen carefully. This won't take long. Nande, oh my. Why are you? I realized how hard my heart was beating. We might be going to the end. I, I might stop soon. It depends on if there's a good break point. I. Oh my god. I just. Oh! I want to see what happens. I put the phone back up to my ear. <laughs> that doesn't matter! I heard a sudden abrupt noise. Had she dropped her phone? Had something happened to her? I listened carefully so as not to miss a single sound. My hands were shaking violently. I hated it. And after I waited a moment... Miyashiro... Miyashiro... Are you listening? Her voice was now weak and feeble. Something was off about the way she was acting. I'm listening. What is it? There was something I forgot to tell you. It was the same same thing she just said. Hey, what's wrong? Why? 
前の両親を殺したのは私だ I thought so Is that what he wished for? I was the one who killed your parents. I could hear the sound of the words she'd said, but I couldn't understand the meaning of the words themselves. For some reason, my hand stopped shaking, and suddenly it seemed like everything around me had faded away into a white blur. What? Got stuck in my throat. I couldn't speak at all. Is that, is that what he wished for? Six years ago, during the Shibuya earthquake, I was the one who killed your real parents at the evacuation shelter. Once again, I could hear the words, but I didn't understand them. Six years ago, Shibuya earthquake, shelter, real parents. Huh? What? My cheeks suddenly felt hot, and my blurry vision came back into focus in the dark room. Only then did I realize what she'd said. What I'd felt wasn't rage. Wonder. Oh. Why? <sighs> it was an important event from my past, but one I'd totally forgotten. My parents hadn't died in the earthquake. Someone had murdered them at the shelter. It was what Nono had refused to tell me when I'd just woken up from my coma. And that was why she'd lied to me. And that was the reason why I ran away from Alba Dorm and went to live in Miyashita Park. Wonder. Why? I repeated myself. Why would she do that? Why would she tell me that, that now of all times? <sighs> all I could hear was her pained breathing. I kept waiting anyway. I couldn't hang up the call. I had to tell you now. I forgot to tell you. But why? I yelled in Sarah as she repeated herself. It's because she's about to be killed. <laughs> oh shit! Oi, Onoe! Onoe! Hey, Onoe! Onoe! Suddenly the call ended. She'd hung up. I tried to call back and realized it was impossible. It was an unlisted number. <laughs> what the hell was that about? I whispered, knowing I wouldn't get an answer. Seriously, what the hell? What was the point of calling me like that? No, there was a bigger question. Why? Why was Serika born? Come on, we got, I gotta know the answer to this. On that day, I ran into my parents at the evacuation shelter by chance. Right after that, I had a terrible headache. It was probably the moment when Serika was born. I know that my parents were murdered at that very same shelter. Which means she murdered them immediately after I created her. 
My thoughts were a mess, and it was hard to think straight. But something told me I had to figure this out. Sarah said that her purpose in life was to keep me alive. But would killing my parents really make that easier? Mom and Dad were trying to take me and evacuate to a supposedly safer place. Killing them wouldn't make them less likely to survive, not more. It's like Kuna Sato-san said, it doesn't make any sense. That's right. But Sarah told me it doesn't make sense. The very first thing she did after being born contradicts what she told me. Which means... Her real goal wasn't to keep me alive. Suddenly I found myself looking at the picture on my phone. A photo of me and my family from Albador. This contradiction also applies to her attacking against Nona, too. Sure, she did manage to figure out who Serika really was. But if Serika's goal really was to keep me alive, would killing Nona really make that easier? Nona always tried her best to protect me. She even risked her life to do so. Which means that for Serika, it would have been better to keep her alive. She could have just used mind control to alter her memories about her real identity, just like she did with Ito. So why didn't she? Why did she have to kill No No? What is going on? Does she have some other goal? And is that why she had to take Nono's life? I could feel a certain desire welling up within me, one I hadn't felt in a long, long time. If that really is the case, then I have to find out why. I'll find out if my ridiculous idea really is true. And for that to happen, I have to go there. No matter how things might end up. Am I serious about this? I check the time on my phone again. 10, 10 p.m. There were 18 minutes left into the moment when everything began. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What is going on? What is the purpose? I I swear this is gonna drive me fucking nuts. I laughed a little and ran my hand along Nono's desk again. Was I betraying Nono again? Every single time. It was she was still alive. Would she have slapped me across the face if she found out about it? I'm sorry, but you know you did it too. You lied too in the end. You lied to protect me. So I'm going to do the same. Because this is about you, and you mean everything to me. It's about the reason why you died. I need to know the truth. I was lying when I said I didn't. Of course, thinking about what I w was about to do terrified me. But I wasn't about to change my mind, no matter what. <coughs> Surprisingly, it was Arimura, not Nono, who slapped me. She hit me so hard, the impact traveled all the way to my ears and made them ring. <laughs> Don't be stupid! Who do you think you're trying to impress? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. You're right. I put my hand to my cheek where she'd struck me and it felt a little hot. I'd laughed because it hadn't hurt as hard as when Nono did it. Nono was used to slapping people in the face after all. Or maybe she was just really strong. But Arimura seemed to think I was laughing because I wasn't worried at all. Her shoulder shook more violently with rage. It's too dangerous. 
You don't know what they're planning. I'm just going to hear what she has to say. It should be fine. そんな嘘つかないでください。私に嘘が通じないのは分かってるでしょ。Don't lie to me. You know that won't work. Horimura was out of breath and seriously angry. She was really worried about me. Takuru-san. Takuru-san. Uki and Yuta were standing next to her, looking worried. I kneeled down so I was at their height. Don't worry. It's true that I'm just going to hear what she has to say. But what came after that is a lie, right? You'll probably be killed if you go. Kunosato-san. Kunosato-san? Of course, I knew that. There was a good chance I'd be killed. And Dad, Dad would be the one who'd kill me. But I wish that she wouldn't have said that in front of Uki and Yuto. You've never even been in a fight before. Am I wrong? I. Demo. Yes, but I had to go. I knew in my head that it was stupid, and my heart was filled with terror. But there was something even deeper that pushed me forward. Kurusu-senpai wouldn't want that. I know that for a fact. Huh? What? Uki told me about the letter. I see. Kurusu-senpai's feelings. Are you just going to forget about what she wanted? So... Yes, you're right. She'd be really mad. And she'd probably slap me hard across the face like Arimura just did. But I'm going anyway. Arimura looked like she was about to raise her hand again. But then she stopped, clenched it into her fist, and lowered it. Her eyes were a little red as she glared at me. Why? Why? I'm sorry. Her voice was so soft I could barely hear it. I lowered my head, unable to even look at her. Uki and Yuto no koto. Tanouna. Take care of Uki and Yuto, okay? Sorry. Senpai wa chou nan desho. Chanto kaette kite. Jibun de oni-chan o yatte kudasai. That's not my problem. You're the oldest son in the family, right? That means you need to come back safe and be their big brother. Terrible, she whispered as she left the room. <laughs> oh, Kazuki. <gasps> Someone suddenly waved something in front of my face and I left back. Kazuki had come up next to me. I wasn't sure when. She always surprised me like this. Oh, oh my. Madaitanoka. You're still here. Still here, and are, is she gonna say one thing now or something like? I can't leave you all here. Your her face seemed to say. <laughs> She's giving a freaking lollipop inventory here. What is this bayonetta? <laughs> is he gonna use this to heal? 
She was holding pieces of candy on sticks. Lollipops? How many of these does she have? I couldn't refuse her, so I took them and put them in my pocket. I'd probably never eat them, though. Sorry for getting you involved in this. Keep an eye on Uki and Yuto until they go. After that, take care of yourself on the way back home. I didn't think she'd do it. I didn't want her going with the two of them. I feel terrible for her family if that happened. Hmm. She nodded like she always did. Not even gonna say anything. Not even gonna say anything at the very end, eh? Tried to make sure that it was a yes, but before I could, she ran out of the room after Ari Arimura. Kunisato san was here too, so it would be okay, right? She would make it home, right? Ano. Um, big bro. Yuto spoke up, afraid as he saw me what saw me watch her go. <coughs> to be honest, I wasn't sure what to say. I felt like anything I could say would make him even more nervous. I tried to choose my words carefully. But in the end, this was all I could come up with. I'm leaving. I'll catch up with you guys later. I could tell from his face that he realized it was one of the white lies adults often told children. But he didn't say anything. He just looked at me with eyes that were redder than Ari Morris. Goodbye. We'll be waiting for you. Ah. Yes. We'll wait for you as long as it takes. Ah. Yes. I'll be waiting too. For as long as it takes. Huh? Right? Maybe Yuki's hand holding gave him strength. Because he finally forced himself to say one last thing. I'm sorry, Yuto. And thank you, Yuki. Okay, I'm off. I checked the time. There wasn't much time left. If I stay here any longer, my resolve would begin to waver. I nodded one last time at the two of them, then turned around. It was decided that Shinjo-san would drive me to the Ikari well. I wanted him to take the others to Akihabara as soon as possible. I didn't see how I could get through the area around Shibuya Station on my own. Miyashiro. Miyashiro. As I left to get into the car, Kunisato-san called me called to me from behind. You've got your phone, right? <clears throat> I put my hand inside my pocket to check. Of course it was there. I do. Why? If you learn any information on the committee, no matter what it is, contact me immediately. Oh. I chuckled. That's exactly what I'd expected her to say. I didn't know if I'd learn anything, but I promised her anyway. Onoe 
Anoe told me to get you out of Shibuya. So they were sure that Kustanoa. No look so Shibuya Karadaseba, Yinka in Chikazakeru, to you. I it's no Genchi got Takarada. I agreed because you told me that if I got the psychics out of Shibuya, it'd get me closer to the committee. I. Yes. Kato it. お前自身がそれに逆らう決断をするのなら、それを止める義理はない。別に、お前にこだわる必要はないんだからな。But Yes, you're right. I knew that from the start. Getting a psychic out of Shibuya would cause something to happen. And Uki and Arimura would do just as well as I could. That's So we're not waiting for you, okay? I was seem to be testing my resolve one last time. That was why I looked her dead in the eye and answered. That's fine. I understand that. <laughs> but for a while after that, she said nothing. She seemed to be for once at a loss for words. I frowned. Did she not like that answer? Nanika. Is something wrong? Omaino Saki no Hanashidagana. About what you were saying before. She finally opened her mouth hesitantly. She was probably talking about the call I'd gotten from Serica. When she told me that she was the one who killed my parents. If that's really true. What? Did you figure something out? Yeah. No. Kanesato san probably found Serika's words strange, just like I did. They didn't make any sense. Kanesato san probably had a theory of her own, one she was reluctant to share. But in the end. Oh. The only thing she did was put a hand on my shoulder without saying a word. Until now, all she'd ever done was grab me or choke me, and so I was shocked. I'd never expected this. Oh, wow! Acknowledgement from his senpai! Oh, my god. Oh, either way, you should find the answer for yourself. Whatever you do, Make sure you don't regret it. <laughs> and the words she said were different than usual, too. Kunasato-san is actually saying something nice to me. A psychic of all people. Nanda. What? Uh, uh, yes, Sono. Huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 nothing, 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 nothing at all. I knew she was a Sundere. <coughs> well, a soon, 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 soon dairy, but the dairy is still there, deep, deep, deep down. I was so surprised I ended up saying something I shouldn't have. <coughs> if you're going to send me off, I'd prefer you do it with Kaysan's closing line. I listen to your podcasts. Fuzakiruna. Ha 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 
Uh, uh, wow. Oh, wow, that's a sign of true respect coming from her. Hell no. I refuse to play the role of that goody-goody suck-up when I'm not trying to manipulate information. Now get going, you bastard. <laughs> Indeed. She pushed me away with the hand she's placed on my shoulder. I suddenly felt really embarrassed. Why did I say that? I was so embarrassed I tried to hurry into the car. But then Kurosato-san looked at me and said, Oh. She admires his resolve. If you really want to hear Kay again, wait until the next broadcast. Oh. Telling him to stay alive. I turned around and looked at her face one more time. Her features were elegant, and her beautiful almond shaped eyes were almost always frozen cold. They never betrayed what she was really thinking. Personality was as cold as ice, which was fitting of a dedicated scientist who was always willing to do whatever it took to achieve her goal, regardless of the cost. But sometimes I caught a glimpse of some burning passion inside her. Oh, yeah, you said what I said, but uh, basically a lot more elegant. <laughs> she really was a mysterious girl. Oh, right, there's one last thing I have to ask her. Since this might really be my last chance. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. She is a giggle maniac. She has that sword that was in there. Oh, wow. She had that sword that Takaru played with. Kunosato-san, what's your power? What did you say? The distance between us had started to shrink, but it grew back with that one question. I felt all the air around me freeze. I panicked. Well, I saw it in your room. Saw what? A disorder. That was yours, right? Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, it, was, was it not a decent? Was it a fake? <laughs> Just as I thought things would be between us would end with another series of cold insults from her, Kunisato san started to laugh. She kept laughing in a low voice as I stood there with my mouth hanging open. All I could do was stand there and watch. I never imagined that Kunasada-san of all people could laugh like that. Are you really a giggle maniac? You can't even tell the difference between a fake and a real thing. A fake? Ooh, can we take that with us? I have an idea we can use that to use that as a fake out. We can use that as a fake out against Sakuma. Can we take that with us, please? I don't think they they would expect it to exist. It might just give us the edge to win the fight. Not just a replica, I have for research purposes. My lab in America made it based off some documents six years ago. Barat's 
It was an attempt to find out why, even if the shapes may vary. All the pipes that Durak see may take in the form of the sword. Yeah, I, w I, w I do wonder that. That's a good question. But it didn't work, so they gave me the u this useless piece of junk. <laughs> it's not good for anything to taking up space, but I do use it as a way to hang things up to try. <laughs> and then she laughed again. After she was done laughing, she pushed me into the car. And before she closed the door. Ah, so da. How is he? Oh, that's great. Oh, right. Your classmate, Ito, was it? Looks like he'll survive. Oh. Oh. You seem to have forgotten. But you promised me to be my guinea pig in exchange. So come back and keep your promise. Ah, uh, deep, deep down, deep, deep, deep down, she's she's quite sweet. Uh, I mean, deep, deep, deep down. Then she closed the door. I nodded from behind the window and mouthed the words, Thank you for everything. Everyone really was trying to make me feel better. Everyone really did want to see me again. But now I was going alone down a path that meant that might never happen. Okay, you guys. She's a good Okay, you guys, I I don't know how much is left, but this is as good a place as any. Oh my god, four hours and ten minutes. I gotta change the title of the stream. Oh my god, what should I call this one since we didn't get to the fight? Oh my god. I am still wide awake. This story is fucking amazing. Oh, looks like we're gonna end. It looks like we're gonna end it. End the end the common route next time. Oh god, I am too excited. I am way too excited. Oh my god, you guys, what should I call this one? I think. Uh, There we go. I thought of a name. Okay. So, oh my god, you guys. I love this story so goddamn much. You guys have no idea. You guys have no idea. Oh my god. What? What is... What did Takadu create Serika to do? To... To, 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 to kill people? To, to kill people who... It wasn't to protect, but to attack people who were a threat to him? Is, is that it? Like, I... What the fuck? It was that it like Oh my god. Oh, I really want to know and like fucking hell god. It is driving me crazy but we got to stop here. Next time, ending the common route. Oh my god. So long. Farewell. I've waited the same good night. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.